Hi folks, my name is Jibid. Um I am here to do my first YouTube video um, and the reason for that is I've made a journal for my Etsy shop and it's kind of a bit different for me and I wanted to show you properly because uh, there's so much to it, there's so many pages, there's so many um, embellishments and things that I didn't feel that the five photos that you're allowed on Etsy is going to show it to you properly. So I just wanted to do a, a flip through, <coughs> but um, it might might end up a little bit longer than a flip through, we'll see. So this is the cover I've collaged with different papers. Um, it's a woodland theme, obviously. Um, well, not obvious to you, but I've been looking at it for ages, so it's a woodland theme. And so we've got songs about leaves and quotes about forests and nature and that's the back. Um, I don't know if you have these little tea cards in the States. These are people used to collect these. You used to get one in a box of tea bags or even a packet of cigarettes. So people used to collect the sets. So they're kind of cute little vintage thing. There's a few of those in the book. There's some dictionary quotes and uh, some machine embroidery too. The spine is um, quite thick. The book is nine inches by about six and a quarter and the spine is almost two and a half inches. Um, it's calico cotton and it's um, reinforced obviously but it is quite flexible and I've used this hand dyed um, cotton which is a technique called eco dyeing. Um, I don't know if the camera will pick up, there's a kind of an imprint here of a leaf shape, that was a rose leaf and you, you layer leaves over paper or fabric and then steam them until the, the natural dye extracts from the leaf and, and leaves you these shapes. So um, it's kind of faint, but you can sort of see shadows and nice rustic effects. So I wanted to use that. Um, so I think that's all about the cover. I'll go on to the inside. And this is the first page. It's quite heavily decorated, this book, which I don't normally do like this. But uh, I get bored of doing the same thing, so here it is. I'm going to come back to this first page at the end. So, um, lots of writing spaces, lots of tags to write on, journaling spots. And this is a nice kind of fold-out. I've done a, a bronze ball chain with a acorn charm, which is nice. Um, this fold out has lots of pockets. Let me just move this. I hope that's in frame. Um, fold out twice like that. And then on the back, more pockets and um, tags. I've done a lot of these tracing paper um, tags because it's kind of a neat idea. Uh, this one, the silk ribbon here, and this is two sheets of tracing paper. It's not glued together, it's just open. And then you just machine stitch, as you can see. I've put a rose gold paper clip, which um, I'm really liking at the moment. And you can just put sequins or whatever you want, of course, in there. Another pocket there. Let's move her back silk ribbons and uh, I've attached this with zigzag stitching fabric here on a stitched library pocket there's lots of envelopes and things for you to write on journaling cards <coughs> excuse me and um, dictionary definitions I've tried to keep all the dictionary stuff um, relevant to the woodland theme because I think it's kind of nice to keep it all together. This um, beautiful paper 
um, first editions botanicals that's what that set is I've, I've used quite a lot of that and also this is the second one I've used quite a lot of the wallflower collection uh, Tim Holtz of course it's a magnet pocket and in here this paper tag um, it's uh, thick drawing paper that's designed to come off um, you can see this is eco dyeing again this is much clearer because it's on paper it prints much better and this was Japanese acer leaves so it has this really beautiful layered effect it's really lovely so you can write both sides of that <coughs> excuse me so um, lots of graphics from various places cameo shop Christie Art Design, Graphics Fairy, the old design shop, which all give permission for you to use um, their uh, printouts, which is very kind of them. I'll put links below, and um, some of the graphics are, are purchased from other places or um, public domain that you can use however you wish. And into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul. I really like that quote, although I don't know who it's from. So this is more tracing paper, and I've done this um, like an exercise book for writing, but it's machine stitching, so there's blue and red for the margin. And stamped cotton again. A pocket with a library card, glassine envelope, there's this tiny little bird charm on that oversized paper clip which is cool. And again um, th this fabric is eco dyed. Uh, this is a, a darker batch. I put tea in here this time. Um, I was actually dyeing it for a different project, a big sheet of calico. and. Um, it didn't come out as clear as I wanted for that other thing so I've used it here because I think it looks quite rustic and you can see the faint kind of shadows here. Inside this pocket um, I've glued some card with that wonderful tacky glue, um, the one in the red bottle and I think it's fantastic for gluing fabric because it doesn't feel like it's been glued at all, you can't feel it and it's flexible. Um, and the reason I've put that thin card is so that you can stand up your book ta-da and uh, your fabric doesn't flop down it stays put like a page is supposed to ok I'm just going to take that clip off I think off the front because then the book will lie flat and it does lie completely flat which um, is always nice for writing I think I don't know if anyone else remembers, um, we used to get these drawing books when I was little with tracing paper and you could trace over the image on the back page. Um, and recently I found in a vintage book um, they'd done the same kind of thing over script, which I suppose to practice your handwriting. So I thought this would be quite a neat idea to use it. So I've done an alphabet there with um, another one of the free typefaces. Of course tracing paper is designed to be drawn on or written upon so you have permission to write upon or draw upon that <coughs> oh, there's a stamp there um, some more little two matching tags in two little pockets and this is two matching ones again um, I've done this one more rustic on paper and sometimes I really love when the thread runs out and you get the holes from the machine. Um, I always leave it for a bit. When I see that the thread has run out, I don't go back over because I think it looks cool and it makes it look old and aged. So um, that's two tags the same in, in the two matching pockets there. <coughs> more ephemera quotes and this is more of that beautiful paper which has a, a lovely linen effect on the texture um, more tracing paper 
This one looks cute with a little gold thing there, more like a gift tag. And then um, there's space behind a lot of these pockets so that you can put extra bits. And a quote from Midsummer Night's Dream, which is a really beautiful story. One of my favourites. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Envelope with stitching and um, another little vintage tea card. And I've done that one with a magnet again which is quite neat and uh, I'm just trying to see where I've put the magnets I've lost them but they're tiny they're tiny little disc magnets they're really strong and they're three mil by one mil so very thin and unobtrusive and I found them really great if you're wanting to make uh, envelope closures um, they're quite cool sometimes you can put them on these flip hats as well There's a, some scripted fabric there on a tab. Flower fairy. Um, the other side of that pocket again, and this time you can see a bit of rust here, which can be included for the mordant. Um, and also, I just wanted to mention that what, what I used to scramp, uh, to stamp, sorry, on pa on. Uh, fabric is the stays on uh, ink pad which I think is fantastic it gives a really good impression on fabric it's very clear and although it's not recommended for fabric that particular one most of us are not in the habit of washing our books so it's okay to use because it, it's if you launder it it may bleed a little bit so for this purpose I, I do prefer to use that one so if you're looking for a, a, a nice stamp pad um, that stays on is fabulous and uh, they do also do a fabric one if you wanted and you can see on this side a little bit more of the leaf imprints there more Tim Holtz papers this is a nice big pocket for some uh, scraps woodlandy scraps as you can see There's another tag again that I've done with um, tracing paper and I've put the lines on that one as a combination. This is Rust Smots. Another Midsummer Night's Dream quote. Some more Toxin journaling spots. It's a silk ribbon with a mother of pearl button sewn on. This is a tissue decoupage over um, writing paper so that gives you that space and I don't know if everybody likes these you can always snip them off I suppose but some of us do like them to see the threads left on there. Kind of looks like things are coming undone and they've been there a long time maybe. I like that. Um, and then I've tried to use tree fairies if I can um, to go with the woodland theme again. Um, so that's the sycamore. <coughs> Some of you know me from um, my shop and from Instagram, as I said. And some of you have seen me on Amity Bloom, which is a wonderful channel. I really enjoy watching Nazi and her videos. Uh, she's a really wonderful person. I recently sent her a journal and she was kind enough to uh, do a little video and this idea actually I got from Nazi. Um, it was in the book that I sent and I think that I had tucked this little fairy into a pocket somewhere and she had her um, clipped in so that she looked like she was dancing through the bushes so I thought that looked so cute and she has some really lovely ideas so I wanted to do the same um, so I've put stitching and I just wanted to mention um, if you want to do this this is uh, obviously it's fussy cut from a book um, and some glitter just sprinkled on uh, if you wanted to do this I would recommend acetate not laminate like I did on this one um, because this had to go through about 20 times 
to get rid of the cloudiness and I think that Nazis I must have done by acetate but I couldn't remember which way around I've done it so um, she's going to go there and this came out quite nice I like this um, I'd originally intended just to stitch and cut out a tag shape but um, I thought well actually it looks quite cute as a I'll just cut it into a bigger tag there so it's a decoration and it's got its own little tie and some black twine there and uh, a little mushroom charm so there's a pocket here for um, another fold out and some more ephemera bits um, let's see if I can get that back in and the same on this side so that's tracing paper with stamps to make a, an extra pocket and there's this nice quote um, from that poem two roads diverged in a wood and let me just put these back in here okay so I think of Nazi every time I see her on this side this is a lovely graphic from a children's book page that I've just made into a tag and this idea I use these myself um, it's not in case you don't know your letters or your alphabet I'm sure you do by now um, but I keep these in notebooks or journals whatever I happen to be using I, I have several copies and I use different typefaces <clears throat> because sometimes I try to learn how to write in a, in a certain typeface for addressing envelopes, boxes and uh, for doing titles in journals and things like that so um, sometimes if you're writing and you, you can't remember how the H goes or the W goes you can just quickly refer back if it's handy like that so I like to keep some of those you can do the same if you want there's a painting from a vintage uh, thingy book in this cute beautiful fawn picture that's an envelope for you to use in a big pocket and this is um, from a book uh, of Monet paintings um, I have not included the original Monet for you I'm, I apologise it's just a copy and more tree fairies here in the willow um, and I think I might just prop this up a little bit because it's getting near the end and because it's such a thick book it's difficult to see with the angle um, I do like to put a little thing here sometimes um, was well like a handle really just stapled on some tea dyed cotton lace um, because it, it stops a small thing going too deep and getting lost and hard to get to in it if this pocket was a big one um, but also it looks pretty and helps you get them out easily <clears throat> so this is um, you might recognise this from Daphne's diary just cut out and distressed a little bit um, I thought it was really beautiful it's a textile uh, mushroom so that's there um, <clears throat> excuse me more um, pockets and collaging and this came out quite nice there's a, a quote on here um, and this paper is a, a vintage a naval book that I got um, of um, like blank forms which is really handy and, and nice to use vintage ephemera sometimes so I've put some black stitching and some uh, rustic twine and also I do like how this one came out um, I've recently found a channel um, I can't remember her name but her name is Sigita and uh, I can't remember the name of her channel um, I'll try to find it and put it but she she uses these um, scripts script stamps and she actually one book that she was showing it looked like the same stamp that I had which I thought looked really cool so Sigita I've copied you and I think it's really nice um, and I've put some stitching around a, a tea card there 
is it tuck spot fabric tracing paper another tracing paper pocket um, with some fold outs and ephemera postage stamps there's a another dear stamp and a charm and I think this is the last big pocket this also came out nice with silk ribbon there's a, a metal eyelet a fold out with some bits in there and some ink lace doily and then um, on here this is really beautiful um, I found this on a public domain site um, just a, a, an old vintage book cover so I've done it like a book there and that's the full copy of um, that poem from earlier on and uh, just to show did I say there was a bookmark? Okay. Um, I've done this video a couple of times now and I keep getting it wrong. So I, one time I got cut off the last one. So I can't remember what I said and what I haven't said. So I apologise if I'm repeating myself. Going back to the first page, um, I wanted to explain that um, I like to put my favourite layouts and my my nice ideas that I particularly like on that first page um, because I don't know if you're like me and when you're using a journal or a notebook you get to the last four or five pages and then you start to get bored and I want a new book now so that's what I do so what I think is rather than putting the nice stuff at the back where you don't always see it because when, you, when you're writing in a journal, you use it, you open up, and you see this page every time. And then you get to where you're writing and carry on doing your journaling stuff. And then you close the book again, and you don't really see the rest of it always. <clears throat> so I do like to put my favourite bits here. Um, so I'll just explain. I've got this little flip out that I like to put with each journal. And it's got, in case you... Leave it on a bus. This is here. And let me just pause. Okay, um, sorry I had to pause because uh, there was somebody at the door. Okay, so flip out personal info in case you get lost on a bus. Um, somewhere for important numbers. And this is like a library pocket and I've done, um, I've made this library card. Uh, Thomas Hardy is one of my favourite writers. So I've picked The Woodlanders, which I thought was very appropriate. So you could, of course, write on there. And another dictionary definition. I find these sometimes on um, Pinterest. And sometimes I wonder if people have made these words up, to be honest, or made up the meanings, at least. And I think, well, it's quite nice, the sentiment that's there, so I will use it, but it may not be accurate. And uh, this one here, fill your paper with the breathings of your heart, and that's by William Wordsworth, and I think really that sums up why we journal, so I like to include that. Um, and then in this front pocket little envelope in case you thought there was not enough tabs hanging out of this journal you can use some more there um, there's a little file folder with some black stitching um, and some bits in there this is a, a little needle packet that um, I use these in my needle books that I make too and when I send something out I always try to remember to include a business card and I do make lots of different ones but this one seemed to kind of go with the woodland theme and I've got a little rabbit charm I don't know if that's going to focus um, so that seemed appropriate and when I sometimes get visitors 
and they ask me what I'm doing and I show them. People are kind of confused by journals, junk journals I should say, and although they think they're attractive and, and nice, um, they always have this confused look on their face. So <laughs> what I did was make this little letter for them for um, and with this note on the top. If you're new to junk journaling or you have received this book as a gift. So um, that kind of explains that you don't need to be scared of junk journals. And I, I like the typewriter font. I think that looks kind of cute. So that's in there. Um, so that's my wooden journal. I have made one more very similar, um, similar size and the same theme, but of course some of the collaging is has to be different because you use one of a kind pieces and you know the papers may be in different places. So I'm going to do a quick video of that one too and I think more or less that's it really, that's all that I wanted to cover and show you and I really like how the bits and all these charms some of the charms I've put actually on the tab so that they will stick out and you can see them properly and some are attached to paper clips but they look pretty okay so that's my woodland journal thank you everyone for watching bye